Good evening and welcome to Goa 365. I'm Amanda Alfonso. First, the headlines. Construction of dam at Virdi by Maharashtra government in the Madai Basic will spell doom for Goa say experts. High court order and cabinet decision on deck beds yet to be implemented by the tourism department. Anti SZ Yatra covers five talukas in North Goa, now heading south. Nikola Borges of Tempo Sports Club scores twice against Mohan Bagan in the ONGCI League. Now for our top story. Madhai Bachao Abhiyan convener Nirmala Sawant, while castigating the government over its stand on the proposed dam at Virti, also announced that she would be filing a contempt petition against the government of Karnataka. Interacting with media persons, Ms. Sawant questioned the state government's logic in supporting the Maharashtra government's plan for a dam at Virti, which would be within the radius of 3 kilometers of the Anjune Dam in a seismographic sensitive Madhai Basin. She also pointed out that Goa's case against Karnataka over the Kalsa Badura project would be weakened if the state government supported a dam in the lower catchment area of the same Madai Basin while opposing the project in the upper basin. Actually, the government of Goa should not allow the government of Maharashtra to construct that dam at all. And when the, the case is in the Supreme Court, by the government of Goa for the distribution of the water and Madhai Bachav Abhiyan has approached the Supreme Court for the destruction of the environment, I don't understand the reason why the government is giving permission for the government of Maharashtra to construct the Viridi Dam. Rajendra Kerkar of Madhai Bachao Abhiyan and noted environmentalist Dr. Nandakumar Kamath pointed out that Maharashtra government has already started preliminary work on the construction of the dam as machinery is in place to take rock samples which will determine where the foundation of the dam is to be erected. So there are two causes. One is intensive rainfall unexpectedly and the second cause is massive deforestation and heavy sediment load which entered at a high speed from Virdi area on Goa Maharashtra border in Kerim village and flooded the village with, within no time. All three of them rejected the government's argument that the dam at Virdi would help control the flooding of Bicholi and Keri villages and pointed out that they had written the, to the government explaining the reasons for flooding and also how a dam at Virdi would actually adversely affect Goa and especially Bicholi and Satari Talukas especially as the Madai Basin is not only an interstate basin but also an eco-sensitive area that needs to be protected. They pointed out that huge tracts of forest land have been deforested with trees uprooted, thereby exposing the soil to vagaries of nature which during heavy rainfall will deposit in the river basin and be pushed downstream where it causes flooding in Goa. While noting that government of Goa is finding it difficult to manage the overflow of water of Anjune Dam and the sudden release of the water when the levels go high has resulted in people downstream living in fear and anxiety, they argued that another similar project should not be permitted in the same area. Mr. Kerkar enunciated how Valvati River would be affected as it would get heavily silted due to which the flow of water downstream to Goa would be adversely affected. Less water in the river would mean that the farmer from Satari and Bicholi Talukas would not be able to continue with their activity. Besides, the salinity of the river would increase as saline water from the sea would travel further upstream. Dr. Kamath, while pointing out that Goa government has not done any environment impact assessments nor the cost-benefit study of 600 meters long and 48 meters high dam at Virti between Temp and Taliache Valatso Dongor, he also had his own take on who it would actually benefit. Illegal querying lobby, Ill illegal forest uh, contractors lobby and because there is lot of poverty in that area, lot of illiteracy in that area and lack of employment because it is at the tail end of Maharashtra. Hardly you know you see any governance there. Meanwhile, Ms. Savant, while pointing out that Karnataka government was clandestinely continuing with the work on Kalasa Badora project in the upper catchment area of the same river basin, said she had collected photographic evidence of this activity. Madhai Bachav Abhiyan has taken the photograph after a week 
and taking the photograph and stating the difference of the work they have done there, we are going to approach the Supreme Court for filing the contempt against Karnataka government. The tour season has started and it's time for those involved in the trade to make their bucks. However, as been happening every year, there is an overkill that appears that the goose that lays the golden egg may be killed. Shack owners every year before the commencement of the season begin agitating that shacks be given to traditional owners instead of the lottery system. This year, as the Lok Sabha elections were round the corner, the government gave in to practically all their demands and 80% of the shacks were allotted to traditional shack owners. However, Goa 365 team discovered that at the Queen of Peaches, Kalangut, some of the shacks are managed by non-Goans, thereby indicating that the locals who got the license have given the shack on contract to somebody else to manage. Besides, with the exception of few Goans, the overwhelming majority of people employed at the shacks are youngsters from other parts of the country. Shack owners have also crowded the beach with deck beds, which are visibly in excess of the number permitted in violation of the High Court order. It would be pertinent to note that the tourism department had capitulated to the shack owners' demands and allowed them to put up 10 deck beds per shack, while Goa Coastal Zone Management Authority had recommended that only three deck beds be permitted per shack. However, when the disagreements reached the High Court, it ordered five deck beds per shack and this order was also adopted by the Cabinet. However, the ground reality at Kalangut is that each shack owner has put up around 20 deck beds. When Director of Tourism Arvind Lolyekar was telephonically contacted, he maintained that each shack is allowed 5 deck beds. He however informed that his department is busy finalizing allotment of shacks and have not yet enforced the cabinet decision or the High Court order. We are heading for a short break. Stay with us. <laughs> 